Hi guys, back with another video for you today. Today's video is not your traditional video that I do on the channel. Uh, this is a video that I recorded live on Amouage's Instagram account recently with the Pierre Negrin perfumer who has created multiple fragrances for the house of Amouage, including their bestseller called Interlude Man. But in this hour-long video, we do discuss a lot of the fragrances that he's worked on, which the latest being Portrayal Man, but soon to be launched, the uh, flanker to Interlude Man, Black Iris, which we discuss in the video. But along the way, we discuss all the creations that he's done and the perfumers he's worked with. And we also discuss some technical terms and um, ideas around different notes and things like that. So it's a longer video and it's not a traditional format of a full length video. It's been formatted inside a box, but it's a great video to watch and learn a lot about Amouage and Pierre Negrin, the perfumer and the creations. And I was pretty much moderating and uh, asking the questions uh, in the video. I was very grateful that they invited me uh, on this very first um, live video that they they did, uh, the series that they've started, and also it was exciting to learn that this new flanker for Interlude Man is being launched very soon, and I'm, I'm excited for it, and I can't wait to smell it. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, and enjoy the video. Hello, I'm Pierre Negrin. I'm here today to share with you some insight about the behind the scene of a, a creative process for an amouage fragrance. I'm going to give you also some uh, insight and uh, on what's going on when I am involved in the development of a new product. Uh, this time I would like also to invite Sebastian Jara of Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews and editor at Safflerbon. Good morning, Pierre. Hello, Sebastian. How are you? Good, good to see you. Nice to see you, live. <laughs> yes, live. Yeah, how's, how's it going? It's going well. I mean, you know, based on everything what's going on today in the world so there's nothing really to complain about so far in my case yeah sounds good yeah exactly here too so shall we get started yeah i believe so we probably we can go ahead definitely i have a lot of things to to talk about yeah well let's go ahead and start with this question tell me how long you've been creating fragrances for well, I've been involved in the creation of fragrances more than 20 years now, over yeah, 20, 25 years. So, and uh, it's been a, yeah, uh, already a long career in the industry. Nice. And you've created four men's fragrances for Amouage, three feminine fragrances, and five uh, library collection fragrances for Amouage, correct? Correct, yeah, I think that's a total of 12 fragrances so far that uh, I've been involved with for, for this brand. Would you say you've created the most fragrances for Amouage or are there other perfumers that have created just as many as you have? Um, I don't know exactly the, the, the numbers and the details, uh, but I believe that, uh, yeah, it's probably one, one of the most, uh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And I have several of your fragrances too, so there's okay. some good ones there. <laughs> so, which was your favorite fragrance to work on at Amouage? Well, as a matter of fact, in fact, it it was uh, Interlude because uh, Interlude, in a way, was my very first um, development uh, for Amouage. It was the first time I've been approached approached by uh, uh, Christopher Chung at the time to. To, to start creating a fragrance for for the brand, and uh, so you know that's uh, that's how the, the whole thing started for me. Cool. So tell me a little bit about uh, Interlude Man. Then, uh, how was it working with that fragrance or creating the fragrance? Well, it, it, it in for me it was really a, a, 
a new world, you know, because uh, I'm, I was not so familiar with Amouage. Uh, I had only heard a, only good thing about the brand. I knew it was a, a brand of uh, quality, you know, of um, really uh, luxury, uh, high-end uh, products. And uh, so I was really excited to, to embark on that journey and uh, to start cr developing and getting the opportunity to, to do something for, for the brand. And uh, so I, I, it, it was really uh, something uh, new to me. What I loved about it is that uh, this brand gives you really uh, freedom to, to work and no restriction, no boundaries. And for in the case of Interlude, Interlude, I like the name also. You know, it, it's uh, something that resonated to me. And uh, the fact that uh, Interlude, in fact, is a... Uh, it's a space in time. It was a, for me, it represented a space in time, and uh, it's, it highlights the, the tension between the chaos, disorder, and also serenity. And I, I really, I really like that. Uh, it's trying to 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 stop you, to pause, to pause the time, and 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 create this special moment and find translate that into a, a smell and a, and a fragrance mm -hmm. so the in, does the incense have something to do with that experience for interlude definitely the incense yeah. for, for many reasons because uh number one it's a indigenous uh, product from oman and uh so in fact uh, incense is, is involved in a lot of, of my fragrances when uh, I, I create for Amouage because uh, it's part of the, the DNA of the, the brand. Yeah. And, uh, and, it, and it's really, uh, I mean, Oman is really about incense. It's very famous. They are incense. In fact, it's the, the best in the world. So, uh, for me, it, it was something definitely that I had to, to use. And, and also in sense, I find that uh, very, um, uh, not only uh, powerful, but uh, very long lasting, of course, but it, it's a very slow evolving smell, you know, uh, in sense, it's kind of has that serenity, it calms you down, it's very, uh, it's, the evaporation is very low and it's, uh, it's a beautiful ingredient to, to work with. And, and the, the, that supports a lot, uh, in fact, the foundation of the, the interlude fragrance. Oh, wow. Well, I have more questions to ask about incense, but before we get to that, why throw in uh, the oregano note in interlude, man? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, oregano is something that uh, I kind of grew up with because I'm, I'm originated from the south of France. So I, as a young child, I, I was always surrounded with all these uh, um, aromatic plants and herbs that we use uh, for cooking but and that are everywhere, you know. And um, oregano, thyme, I mean, being kind of a little bit similar in smell. Uh, it's, it's something that for me is very um, evocative and I really loved uh, using the, those, uh, this kind of ingredient. Why oregano more than anything else? Because oregano has also kind of a universal resonance. Mm -hmm. um, not only it's uh, very powerful, it has a lot of signature. To me, it, it, it's also something that reminds me a little bit my uh, my roots from the Mediterranean region, the south of France, but also, uh, believe it or not, a lot of people know the smell and the taste of oregano uh, without <laughs> specifically, you know, uh, being able to pinpoint it. But because when you eat pizza, in fact, uh, oregano is really a, a key uh, product in the, in the, that, the taste yeah. of the pizza. So maybe that that's why also it has a universal uh, you know connotation and and um, I would say uh, uh, 
something that people connect with very, very easily in a subliminal way because they don't necessarily know or it's oregano but, and it's kind of a com <laughs> comfort, you know. Uh, yeah. Recognizability. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So that was your first fragrance for Amouage, but one of your latest fragrances is uh, Portrayal Man. Tell me a little bit about Portrayal Man. Well, Portrayal Man is, uh, yes, the very last one. And uh, that, uh, that this fragrance is um, also quite, um, you know, rich, has a lot of body. And uh, the, the, the body is mainly uh, based on uh, like patchouli uh, woods that uh, I really enjoy, like Cipriol, for instance. Uh, and uh, there is a little bit of a leathery uh, effect in the in the background of uh, Portrayal Man. Portrayal Man, in, in fact, was trying to go back to the 80s, you know, and um, what was happening in the 80s where there was pretty much no, no, no limitation, everything was over the top, everything was, you know, completely... Uh, out of this world uh, for the time. And uh, so I was trying to, to reinterpret that and translate it into a, a, a men's fragrance. So that's why I used a lot of those very powerful driving woods and leather and things that usually give you a, you know, a lot of, um, muscle in a in a men's fragrance so it's like a powerhouse <laughs> 80s powerhouse yeah kind of that was the intention at least uh there is also some cumin for instance i love that yeah and uh cumin uh i i'm personally i'm fascinated by cumin uh, i find that uh fantastic to, to use as an ingredient I know it's quite controversial depending on the region of the world you you live in. Yeah. But uh it's a it's a great great uh ingredients to work with cumin. Seems like cumin and incense are kind of trademarks for amouage, is that true? I see it popping up quite a bit. Yes, yes, uh incense for sure and yeah. cumin as much as I can I, I I try to to use it quite often, you know. Yeah, it's for for Amouage, definitely. So when I was doing my research to review Portrayal Man, the only notes that were credited were Cade, uh, Violet Leaves, and um, Vetiver. Uh -huh. So how come the other notes you disclosed, such as cumin and leather and patchouli, were not uh, listed as notes? Or even leather, I think you mentioned. Yes. What, what it is, is I think when uh, we talk to the consumers, uh, we don't want to get also too much into details in order to mm -hmm. avoid sometimes confusion. You know, okay. we, we just try to highlight the, the, the main constituents or the, if, if the ones that are the most striking or the, the most interesting, let's say. And um, so, but Violet, for instance, uh, going back to Violet, it's, uh, it's a very important uh, material in this fragrance. Because the, the violet leaf absolute uh, is adding some kind of a, a freshness to, to this uh, composition. Okay. Because, you know, otherwise, if you work only with woods and heavy uh, ingredients like leather, incense, and all that, you, you don't have anything on the top to, to lift up the fragrance to, and to add a, some, some light and some brightness also to the... To the fragrance so that's the, the what's the violet leaf absolute here is doing it's adding that brightness that green wet effect which uh but in a natural way also mm -hmm. so is a uh, violet leaf uh, is that a popular note these days or I, i'm seeing it slowly pop up yeah i mean we can say that it's uh Popular maybe is not the right word, but it's uh, something that we use, I would say, on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. And uh, what's the difference between the violet leaf and the violet flower? 
as far as the smell goes? Well, the, the thing is, in, uh, in the industry, in the fragrance industry, we use the leaves because uh, that's uh, some, it's what we extract. Uh, and uh, that's uh, also the, the easiest thing to do. The, the flower mm -hmm. is, is beautiful. The color of the flower is beautiful. And the, it smells uh, also beautiful when you, 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 know, you cut one, a flower but it's not uh, something that we can really extract uh, because uh, it's, it's, it's difficult and, uh, and in terms of um, the, the outcome is not that great in a way, you know. It's very difficult and that's why, opposed to the leaves, which gives you a good yield and, uh, and you end up with something that is uh, very uh, easy to, to make and to, and to use. Okay, makes total sense. Flowers are very, flowers are very delicate, you know, in general. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've smelled some things with violet. The flowers, they smell like violet candy. So they have that really kind of sweet uh, yeah. candy-like experience. Exactly. And this, is, and this is not the natural smell of the, the, the violet flower, you know? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> So let's move on to one of my favorites, Journeyman, which I recently reviewed as a Safra Bond review. Tell me uh -huh. the creative, creative process in making this fragrance and how was it to work with Alberto Marias, who you did, uh, well, with, you, work, you created it with? Okay, so first thing is, uh, who doesn't want to work with Alberto, right? It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's always a, a pleasure to, and an honor to share some work with him. And uh, I think on this one, it was a, a great uh, partnership. We, we exchange ideas, we exchange uh, uh, like uh, blocks, you know, for little accords and things like that. And, and from there, we, uh, we were able to uh, build this, this fragrance. The, the, the men, in fact, and ended up being something very spicy. So, Alberto piece was, in fact, carrying most of the spices, that, that spiciness that you have in the mm -hmm. fragrance. And I, I, I had more of the, the, the other side of it, which is the, the warm, uh, sweeter, uh, more sensual piece of the fragrance, where uh, I, I was working, you know, with uh, the Sisters Absolute, Olibanum again, uh, some tobacco absolute. Uh, so that's, uh, in fact, he, he was more uh, bringing, he was bringing in more like the, the fresh, spicy, peppery, ginger effect of the fragrance. And, and in my, my piece was more about the sensuality, the warmth and the, and the, the, the foundation of it. Mm-hmm. So in the fragrance, it, there's a very chili pepper-like experience, but I see that you have Sichuan pepper. Yes. And this is not necessarily like, like black pepper or chili pepper. It's different, correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a different uh, type of pepper. And uh, the, the Sichuan pepper has more like of a citrusy freshness to it. It's, it's, mm -hmm. also, it's also spicy, you know, but it's not... Uh, compared to pepper, regular pepper, it's not that spicy. You get more of a citrus effect, a little bit like lemon, grapefruit. You know, it's uh, it's surprising. In fact, when wow. you, smell it, you smell it for the first time, you're like, oh wow, I can't believe this is pepper. <laughs> but uh, and and that's why it it brings in something a little bit different uh, as a spice uh, note. I see. Wow. Um, now, we do, you did another fragrance for Amouage called Sunshine Man, which focuses on lavender, correct? Uh -huh. Tell me a little bit about uh, Sunshine Man. Well, this one, it's a little bit um, b going back to, to my childhood, you know, and, and my, in the south of France when, where I grew up. Uh, mm. it, the lavender is really the, the core of it, for sure. But uh, the, the f this fragrance is surrounded with a, a lot of um, notes that are uh, that you found 
you, you find in, in, in the south of France. And there is also a sweetness added to it with a touch of vanilla and uh, some tonka, you know, which makes it uh, more um, suitable, I think. It's not, because when you have too much lavender, sometimes pe people find it aggressive or they, they think it's more uh, like a, a functional type of smell, you know. Uh, so that's why here, by using all these other uh, materials, uh, we were able to, to give it more of a sophisticated and warmer, easier uh, style, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you, uh, what I was going to say was Sunshine Man reminds me of a Middle Eastern sweet treat uh, called halva. And... Uh, when I really? smell it, it reminds me of this. It's a it's a sweet treat made with sesame seeds, but uh -huh. I think I think whatever uh, sweet notes you have in with that fragrance, um, just kind of like comes off like I'm, I'm I'm smelling this sweet treat from the Middle East called halva. Have you smelled this at all, or? No, I'm not familiar with this uh, product. Yeah, but, um, uh, uh, maybe uh, one day I hope I will be able <laughs> to taste it. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, for sure, I think the, the tonka in the fragrance brings in that little bit of an almondy uh, side note. Mm. And uh, so with the vanilla, of course, it makes sense uh, based on what you describe here. You, I see. We end up maybe with the same kind of effect, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good to know. So you've created three ladies' fragrances. Why don't we start off with the uh, Portrayal Woman, which I'm very mm -hmm. familiar with. And you worked with uh, Anique Monardo on this one. Yes. And what I like about Portrayal Woman is the contrasting notes of gardenias, which I'm a, I am love the smell of gardenias, with tobacco. Tell me, what was the inspiration with this fragrance and uh, how is it working with Anique Monardo, who I'm a fan of? Oh uh, yeah. So uh, here portrayal going back to this one is uh, again we were in the 80s. That was the the concept. Uh, that's what uh, Christopher Chung, who was the the director, you know, uh, at Amouage previously, the artistic director, he, he wanted to go back to this uh, the spirit of the 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 80s where. Again, nothing was uh, subtle, you know. It was uh, it was all about being loud, being over the top, being you know, crying pretty much. Uh, not crying, sorry, <laughs> screaming, screaming, screaming. Yeah. And uh, so the, the 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 way we we came up with this one is that um, I, I we wanted to re constitute a, a big white flower that will really be in your face and and scream at you you know and and being abundant being uh, very uh generous and uh, and 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 of course uh striking in a, in the olfactive profile of the flower so i kind of put something together centered on gardenia. Gardenia was really the, 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 the centerpiece of that white floral combination. There, was, there were also a, a little bit of jasmine and tuberose to, to, to go along with the, the gardenia. So I, I kind of developed that part of the fragrance and Annick had something much more darker, woodier and um, deeper i would say I so so what we did at some point because christopher wanted a, a very big white flower or big white floral bouquet but he, he thought that my interpretation was maybe a little bit too literally floral so he wanted to have that mysterious deeper darker effect that uh, anik had in her in her proposition mm -hmm. and so at the end we again we 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 combine you know the, the best of both and we ended up with uh, the one that is on the market and having that 
big forest is supported by some tobacco, a lot of woods, and which makes it even probably more mysterious and uh, and and more uh, substantive, also long lasting, and all that at the same time. Wow. I recently introduced it to a lady, an older lady that doesn't wear perfume and she fell head over heels for it. Oh, okay. She was like, I want to get me some of that. Well, that's <laughs> so, good to know. Yeah. I'm so glad. tell me, uh, yeah, she was really happy with it. Tell me a little bit about the other two creations for the ladies you've done at Amouage, which I'm not too familiar with. So it's about the uh, imitation woman, right? Uh-huh, imitation woman. Yes, imitation. This one is a, a little bit of a floral bouquet with uh, some ylang ylang as a, a main main piece here on the on the that you can smell right on top. Yeah, and uh, there is also some rose involved. Uh, so uh, that's the combo, and and with orange flower. So it's really involving, like I would say the 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 three different floral sea, rose, the ylang ylang, and the and the orange flower. So that's for the the floral effect in the fragrance. But what's interesting is here it, there is a a contrast with a, some licorice note, which is a, kind of unexpected. Yeah. So that. <laughs> in that fragrance, there is a a licorice effect with some uh, reglis. I don't know exactly how you... I think it's called licorice in English. Licorice. Uh, yeah, licorice. Yes. So yeah. Um, this adds something very special to the, the fragrance. And, mm. and, you know, with, with flowers, it's not something you're necessarily going to use on a regular basis. And mm -hmm. and obviously in the in the background you have some olibanum again. Oh, okay. Because uh, as I said at the beginning, this is a little bit in the DNA of the. It's more the than brand. Mm -hmm. part of the DNA of the fragrance. And wow. uh, so there is a little bit so, some black current also involved in that uh, fragrance, but this is more of a nuance. You know, okay. the re it's really the that that. that uh, tension between the the licorice and the flowers that makes it a little bit uh, different and, and unique. Very interesting. And is that the only other one you've done for the ladies, or is there is there one more? Uh, there is one more, which is which is Journey for Women. Journey for Women. Okay. So Journey for Women uh, in this one, uh, that's an interesting one. Because here again we have a, a, a kind of a different uh, combination of uh, floral notes. Uh, it's uh, based on osmanthus. Oh, wow. So osmanthus is a beautiful little flower uh, which has a, a very interesting olfactive profile because it, it smells uh, like uh, I would say uh, let's say jasmine combined with apricot. So mm -hmm. when you when you smell the flower, you smell both. You smell that floral effect from a jasmine, let's say, but you get also the the fruity uh, apricot note at the same time. So it's like a dual, you know, uh, magic flower. <laughs> magic flower, yes. <laughs> so that, and it's not very very often. Uh, used very often in, in, in a composition. So the, the osmanthus is really what's driving the, the floral sea. And then it's, it's um, combined with some mimosa and jasmine and honey. Oh. Honey is a very uh, key player here. Uh, it's kind of uh, filling up, you know, the, the, the heart of the fragrance makes it makes it very uh, rich and uh, almost uh, has, brings in a little bit of an edible effect, but not in such a, a gourmand, you know, uh, type like we, we can smell very often these days. I see. And that so, floral, floral bouquet, let's say, in the journey is mm -hmm. 
is combined with the cypriol and saffron. Oh. So Which that... You, you use the cypriol in journeyman as well. Yes, as well, yes. I love, I love cypriol. I use this uh, a lot. <laughs> Smells great, yeah. So how do you keep the fragrances different when you're working on, let's say, for example, Journeyman and Woman? What kind of uh, creative process do you have that you keep them separate and not bleed into one another? <laughs> is there a special creative direction for each one? I guess there is, but... Yeah, it's... Uh, but that's uh, very often the most difficult part, trying to um, split your brain to... Yeah. Part two pieces, and uh, so you, you you try the 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 right side is trying to ignore what the left side is doing, you know, and uh, you 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 yeah. The most difficult thing is just not to to look or, or to think about what you have done for the the, the other fragrance, and uh, you just try to explore new things. But still, you need to to stay in the in in the boundaries of the the concept and of what's uh, what's expect, expected, you know, for 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 the the fragrance yeah. at the end. But uh, usually, yeah, if I use, let's say, if I have it happens that I use the same ingredient in both of them, I'm going to use in one. I'm going to use a lot. And in the other one, I'm going to use much less. Because, I mean, in fact, re remember that it's all about proportion uh, yeah. fragrance. It's like uh, when a chef makes a, a recipe or a sauce, let's say, it's all based on how much you're going to use of that ingredient over this one. And, and it's all based on proportion. So mm -hmm. if you, I work for a men's fragrance, I'm probably going to use Cipriol at a higher dosage when I, I, if I work for a women's fragrance. Makes total sense, yeah. Great. So you have done many creations for the Amouage Library Collection. Tell me about those fragrance, fragrances. Well, those, those fragrances, it's a little bit of a different approach. Usually they are much more simple. They are more straightforward. Uh, they they evoke usually very often just one you know smell, or uh, it's they are more monolithic also in the the way they are built, which means that you don't have so many different facets. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, the, the last one I, I did, which is the Opus 11, uh, it's kind of a very uh, woody uh, fragrance. So I, but at the same time, uh, what Christopher wanted to do, he wanted to have uh, some kind of a reinvented wood. Mm. So uh, that sounds exciting. he was... Yeah, he was telling me if there was, let's say, no wood on the market, uh, how would you do it? Uh, or how could we come up with something that's, uh, that's an, is wood, but not recognizable as a traditional or typical wood like we can smell these days everywhere? Mm. So that, that was the challenge of Opus 11, for instance. It, it's really centered on one in item or one ingredient or something that's going to give you the effect of the wood but without being like all this other wood wood sorry that you can smell anywhere everywhere these days so does it smell like oud or it doesn't smell like oud <laughs> it, you know it's a fine line it's a fine line yeah. Okay. You, you, get, you get the effect, but at the same time, it's not so compare. If you compare it to like the traditional wood, you're going to be like, oh, wow, this is different. But now mm. if you, you smell it uh, on its own, uh, of course, it's going to bring you to an wood uh, type of, of, of smell. But I see. it's done. It's not... I shouldn't say that, but it's kind of a fake wood in a way. 
it's <laughs> you know, it, so uh, it, it was very very challenging. We, we had a difficult time, you know, coming up with this one and to be really uh, to get at the end exactly where we wanted to 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 be. I see. So how long does a fragrance take for you to create? Let's say, for example, this last one. How long? I mean, does that take months or years or one year? Six well, months? it depends. It, it's uh, it's very uh, variable. Um, it could be something very quick, you know, sometimes just a couple of months. Because if you start off of the, the right foot, you know, you have the right canvas to to, to begin with, uh, in a very short amount of time, you can get exactly where you want it to, to be and have something perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes, because it's all, it, it's a research work type of work. So you, you, you are exploring, you are researching, you are experimenting, and, and sometimes you, you just can get it right or you, you can get it to the point where everybody is on board all the people involved the decision makers are all uh, you know in love with what you you are uh, offering them so it, it can take months and sometimes years you know uh, mm. but usually with with Amouage it's not the case because uh, uh, the brand has a very they have a very clear vision of what they want to achieve uh, so they give you completely freedom to create and uh but at the same time uh, when you show them things they very quickly they know what they are what they want and and they tell you immediately oh we like this we love this or we don't like that or we don't think this is right they don't make you really waste your time you know trying to to get something which sometimes uh, People have a, they, 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 they don't know exactly how to, to, you know, express themselves or to, or to exchange with you and uh, to, to guide you in a way. Mm -hmm. So going back to the library collection, you have three others that you've created or four others? Uh, for the collection? Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I think it's the eleven, nine, eight, seven, and six. I think it's five of them. Five of them. Okay, tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about the the other uh, ones you've created. Well, the libraries. the other ones, I I um, don't have them ne necessarily in in mind anymore because okay. they, they were done a long time ago, and um, I know that for each one of them, it's the same, pretty much the same uh, process, you know. The, we, we try to highlight something, one, one ingredient or one uh, family of ingredient. And uh, also we uh, try to keep it simple. Simple, direct, straightforward. Uh, it's in your nose and, uh, and, and you, you, you get the message, you know. It's, uh, that's the whole philosophy be behind uh, behind uh, the opus. I see. All right. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions that we had received uh, uh, pre previously to this live. So are the ingredients used in Amouage fragrances all natural ingredients? No, no. I, I tend to use a lot of natural because it's a brand that allowed me to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it would be impossible to create uh, fragrances only with uh, ingredient, natural ingredients. Uh, we definitely need both. We need synthetic and natural. Uh, they are definitely very uh, complementary. And uh, when you use synthetic also product, you we have beautiful and fantastic uh, synthetic ingredients, which uh, are, are really adding a lot of quality and, um, and signature, you know, to, 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 to the fragrance. So here, 
it's really a, a combination of both. Mm -hmm. uh, again, like I said at the beginning, with Amouage, I tend to have a little bit more natural than, than the usual because uh, the, the, the brand and the, the, the product they make really allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. So there's always a bad name with synthetics. I receive comments all the time on my YouTube channel. Oh, those are synthetic. Those are synthetic. But it's a, it's a good thing to use the synthetics along with the naturals, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. In fact, people don't realize that uh, natural product can be very harmful. And uh, you have the most poisonous uh, plant in, the, in nature. And uh, so the, it could be very dangerous, you know, to, uh, to, to, to eat some plants or some product, natural product. And uh, obviously, uh, synthetic are not like this, you know. Some of them, yeah, could be harmful, but as much as uh, natural products. So, uh, in fact, it's, uh, I think often, and let's put it this way, there are some flowers or some fruits that, that uh, in fact, That, yeah, that we can reproduce because we have great synthetic ingredients. And, uh, and this, that allows us to protect nature in a way, because this way we, we're not gonna destroy, you know, um, fields of uh, flowers or, or fruits or whatever. Uh, and because we have some good synthetic that can help us reprodu reproduce that type of smell, uh, it, it's a, it's it's good in a way, you know. It's good for uh, for everybody, for nature, for earth, for human beings, and uh, mm -hmm. that's why it, it's like everything else in life. Uh, you, you need a balance, you know. You balance. you need you need yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are some of your favorite? I mean, you've already mentioned some of your favorite natural ingredients, like cypriol is one of them, olibanum. What are some of your favorite synthetic ingredients to use in creating perfumes? Well, I, look, I, use, I love using Ambrox, for instance. Uh, um, uh, that's a fantastic uh, uh, ingredient. Um, at Fermanish, also the company I work for, uh, we have a really beautiful musk, uh, synthetic musk. Of, of course, we don't use any more uh, natural yeah. animalic mosque yeah so th these are really also a fantastic uh, synthetic uh, we have some other woods that uh, are beautiful and that i i use uh, on a regular basis so uh, i mean uh, unfortunately they don't have very attractive names uh, <laughs> like, i'm sure <laughs> like like uh, natural that's part of the reason also why we always tend to mention natural ingredients mm -hmm. uh, we, we talk about fragrances or when we describe them because for consumers i think it, it's much more approachable and uh, it make it more desirable you know mm. uh, opposed to talking about uh, 63xno for instance uh you know, it's like uh, when you sometimes, uh, well, in the food industry, more and more today, you, you can, if you, if you look at the back panel of a product you buy, you have this list of all these, those ingredients. What well, ingredients yeah. also, you can see that. And I mean, what does it really communicate or what does it tell you? Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, uh, it's not necessarily the, the most attractive thing. To, to talk about. Yeah. So this other question was asked, do perfumers have a daily exercise for their nose? Do you have one? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, when I come in in the morning, when I open the door of my office, uh, the, the first thing I do is I always smell dry down from the day before to see what's left on my uh, blotter. 
blotter being uh, you know a piece of paper that I I, I have dipped the day before in uh, in, in the fragrance, mm -hmm. and uh, I let it evaporate overnight, and in the morning that allows me to smell what's left uh, and, and what what the the very dry down of the fragrance smells like. So because it's going to be much more um, diluted after, and also after all these hours of evaporation, you know, it's uh, something that is uh, very light at this stage. So mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can see really and assess if you have a fragrance that is uh, long lasting or or if what you you smell is right or not right or it's not what you were expected and from there you can do some correction and some um, and some modification to do it so that's that's one thing and the the other the, the other routine is like every day I, i'm trying to smell also a couple of uh ingredients just to to refresh my memory or to or explore new ones that I forgot about or I want to try again or because our palette is it's so big you know we have so many products and ingredients to to pick and choose from that yeah. it's hard sometimes to remember all of them and uh, so you you need to pretty much you need to to practice a little bit on a daily basis like uh like uh athletes or like uh, you know or musicians or, you know mm -hmm. good so i'm going to circle back to interlude man and ask you about what the differences are because the uh, interlude man focuses on incense but is it incense is it olibanum or is it frankincense and what are the differences between these particular notes okay so to to me to my understanding um, those those three words pretty much refer to the same thing except that when you talk about incense usually uh, incense people have in mind the the incense stick you know mm -hmm. that, that you burn and the incense stick in fact when they say incense it's an abbreviation for incense stick and the incense Uh, that uh, makes the smell of the incense stick usually is made out of olibanum or frankincense. Okay. Now, olibanum and frankincense, in fact, they mean they are two different words, but for the same material, same raw material, same product. It depends on the the, the language, the original language they came from. Uh, I think the, the Persian were talking about uh, olibanum, mm. and in Yemen they were talking about frankincense or mm. something like this. So, in fact, it's the same thing. It's the same product, but mm. different words. Different words, okay. Good to know. Yeah. Except that, yeah. as I said, incense is more of a commercial uh, word. Yeah, like the incense sticks you were mentioning, <laughs> pretty much. Right. Yeah. So is there a new version of Interlude Man to be slated to be released soon? Is that correct? Yes. So that's the, 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 the exciting part uh, that, uh, we, I mean, we can reveal it at this point. I think uh, it's uh, something uh, I've been working with the, the new team now, uh, who took over at Amouage. Mm. And uh, because we are now in that uh, time of uh, reflection and transition, uh, the, the, the new people at Amouage wanted to start doing something, you know, with uh, Interlude and uh, make, make a, a, an, another version of it. The idea was kind of... Uh, painting over the the actual fragrance okay which means um in fact it's uh 
sometimes, you know, in, in history, we have seen that happening where painters had a, started a painting and then they, they finished it and they liked it. And, but all of a sudden, they came up with a, an, another idea and they said, oh, maybe how about I'm trying to paint over, you know, and, and see what I can get by doing something new on top of this painting. Mm. But still using maybe some key parts of the, the painting. So that was the, the idea for this new Amouage uh, version. And it's gonna be, in fact, uh, introduce, it's going to introduce uh, an iris piece in this fragrance. So, oh, wow. Right, the, the, the fragrance was um, a little bit um, re-engineered, still being the, the core of the actual Amouage uh, interlude fragrance, sorry. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be the same, uh, the same skeleton, same structure. Uh, you will definitely recognize it, but the, the, some facets have been a little bit uh, shaved and uh, reduce in proportion. And uh, we have introduced and added that Oris piece, which makes it, uh, I think, very interesting. Uh, it, adds, it adds a lot of um, elegance to it. Uh, it makes it uh, also more special, I, I believe. And it's very, very rich, you know, very... Uh, uh, and there is a, also a, a comfort uh, with this uh, iris effect because the original amouage is the original interlude, sorry, is very sweet, mm. has a lot of sweetness to it. And by what, what I did is that I kind of reduced a little bit the, the, the vanilla note in there. And in order to replace that or complement the, the fragrance with another sweetness effect, uh, but not being sweet like vanilla, we, uh, we thought that Oris could be uh, something very interesting. And, and Oris is very chic, very elegant, very, very rich, you know, has a lot of uh, depth, a lot of uh, um, drive at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be two versions of the interlude. You're not, we're not getting rid of the original. No, no, not at all. Not at all. No, no, this, this is just a, an, another interpretation of interlude. All right. So the, this trademark oregano and uh, all the Bantam notes will still exist in the new one? Yes, you will still have uh, uh, Olibanum, definitely. Uh, oregano, I think, is much less of it. That has been, you know, a little bit uh, reduced. Uh, but uh, as I said, it's it's trying to to kind of shave up some facets and re-engineer re a little bit, rebalance some of and the, the proportion of some ingredients. Interesting. So, is it a permanent collection, uh, or is it something that's temporary or limited edition? Do you know? No, no. I think it's something uh, permanent that uh, it's going to be offered as a new uh, interlude. And uh, so it should, I believe on the latest I know it should be called Black Iris. Okay. Nice. Not interlude, man. S yes, still. But uh, it's going to be the, the interlude Black Iris. Oh. Good so, name. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's. Uh, I find that interesting. It, it's it's going to be darker. It's the same blue color, but deeper and darker. You know. Sounds fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, sure. I'm... Uh, let me know. Let me ask you one more question. Why do you like to work with Amouage? Well, because uh, it, it's a uh, it's fantastic brand. Uh, you know, to be involved with the, as I said, they, they give you a lot of freedom. You have really license to create. Uh, there is no, 
no restrictions. Uh, you can come up with any kind of uh, proposal uh, and uh, it's a very simple and direct way also of developing fragrance with them. Usually you have uh, one person uh, on their side who is, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, interacting with, with you and uh, that, that makes it uh, very efficient. And uh, so also their, their concept in, in their image is all about uh, quality, uniqueness, creativity, uh, you know, uh, luxury, high-end product, high-end fragrances. So personally, something that I really uh, enjoy. And uh, so the, the, this brand give, gives you pretty much everything you can dream about uh, as a perfumer to, to express yourself and, and, and to come up with a very special and different fragrances which to me is something very important because compared to what uh, the, 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 most of the, the other brands are doing, uh, Amouage, they, they stay quite, I mean, they stay very unique uh, and they stay different of what the, the, the market, the main market, main street market is doing. And mm -hmm. this is uh, also something I, I really like because uh, this way you, you can, Again, you can use ingredients that you weren't, you couldn't use with some other brands, and and you can do things that are a little bit uh, out of this world, pretty much, you know, with with them. But but still in a in, in a good way and in a very um, pleasant uh, form. Interesting. Good to know. And your favorite creation for Amouage? Uh, well. Interlude, because in fact it, it was my first one and it worked out very well. Uh, I had a, a great time creating it, and it happened. It turned out that it's uh, it's a very good seller for for the brand also. So uh, at the end of the day, I, I think this was really a, a total uh, success for everyone involved. You know. Great. And what was the most challenging one to create? Well, uh, the most challenging, as I said, the Opus 11. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a difficult one. And uh, the, other than that, I mean, all the other ones were uh, also some time challenging in a way, but uh, not so difficult or not so crazy you know we, we were always able to to find a a good compromise and to to come up with pretty much what was expected uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in an easy way interesting cool so should we open up for questions yeah sure if there is any if there are any any questions out there <laughs> I'm not seeing any questions. Well, I think we probably Somebody's have asking. answered <laughs> already a lot. Yeah, we have. Any last things you want to say? Uh, well, the last thing is I'm really happy that Amwash is doing these kind of things, you know, uh, those these live events like that, especially today in the, the world we are in and the, the circumstances that we are going through, that we are living with. Uh, to me, I see that at, since we can't go out and buy fragrances anymore today, right now, uh, at least instead of selling finished fragrances in a bottle, we are selling fragrance history, which is by doing this kind of uh, live event. And I believe this is a very uh, important also, you know, uh, giving a little bit more information, more insights to the consumers and, uh, and selling history is as important 
probably as just selling the, the finished product. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad Amouage is definitely uh, organizing and setting up this kind of uh, event, you know, for for the, the, the consumers and, and in general for the fragrance uh, world. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any last questions, everyone? I guess somebody's asking if there are any perfumers you admire. <laughs> If I admire any perfumers, yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are several of them, and uh, I mean, I I have a lot of uh, respect and admiration for uh, Jean Claude Elena, for instance, uh, for the the work he has been doing. Um, Alberto Morias, of course, because you know, uh, being uh, one of my colleague, also working for the same company, and. Uh, based on what he has done in his career. I mean, this is uh, really uh, mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some um, uh, other ones, like, but more older ones who have really uh, started uh, the, 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 to, to create the, the fragrances of these modern days, like uh, the, the Guerlain at the, the origin, you know, the Guerlain family, uh, these people, they really, they were, uh, they were the, the pioneer. Thanks so much for watching today's very long video with Pierre Negrin, who's created multiple fragrances for Amouage, including Portrayal Man and the soon-to-be-launched Interlude black iris so if you have any questions or comments please do list below i'm excited to smell black iris i can't wait uh, i do enjoy uh, interlude man it's not beast mode uh, as many of you always tell me it is uh, I, I like it for what it is it doesn't have to be beast mode but it's a great unique scent uh, with uh, incense and that oregano note thrown in anyway thanks again please do like this video please share it follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye